We've been talking a lot about refugees locked out of Toronto's shelter system this week, but this city is far from the only region struggling with shelter capacity. Peel Region says its shelter system is also turning people away regularly. In response, the regional council is considering supplying temporary modular homes for people experiencing homelessness. Mississauga Councillor Alvin Tejo brought the idea forward to council. He joins me live in studio this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Farah. Thanks for having us on. Thank you for joining us. For people, you know, we've been talking, as I mentioned, a lot about homelessness in, in this city, in Toronto, but for people who don't know, what is the, the state of homelessness in, in Peel Region? Yeah, I think a lot of people are surprised to hear that we do have a homeless crisis in Mississauga, Brampton and Caledon as well, uh, the cities that make up Peel Region. And, and a lot of that is not just the people who need that housing uh, in those municipalities, but also the overflow that we get from, from other municipalities as well. Remember, the Toronto Pearson International Airport is in Mississauga, so um, people, you know, don't have to travel far Mm -hmm. uh, if they want to settle in Mississauga. And uh, Peel Region has a phenomenal no turn away policy. And we're the only municipality in Ontario that has that. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to meet that need and meet that demand in the last couple of months because of the refugee crisis, because of the homeless crisis that's affecting really everyone in the GTA. That's interesting. So you are seeing refugees as well in in Peel Region. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Over a third of uh, the people who are accessing our emergency shelters are temporary uh, and overflow. Uh, are refugees. Mm. Um, And just two days ago, we saw an encampment outside one of our emergency shelters on the border with Etobicoke uh, on Dundas um, get an encampment, right? And so we've got 30 people sort of living outside uh, the shelter, which is currently full. And you've introduced the idea of modular housing as a way to uh, stem this issue. Describe what these modular homes are like and what you're looking at. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, Councillor Joe Hornick, another regional councillor, and I uh, visited the Federation of Canadian Municipalities a couple of months ago, um, and we saw some examples from around Canada in Kitchener and in Victor- uh, Vancouver, uh, where they've installed these temporary modular homes, which are really 10 by 10 uh, boxes, uh, where you have a bed, uh, you have electricity, you have heat, you have air conditioning, uh, and you have your own personal space. And this was really important to provide people that temporary housing. Uh, to provide them dignity and to provide them the wraparound services. In terms of people's needs, housing is first, Mm -hmm. right? You need housing, you need food, you need water. But without housing, without a housing first policy, uh, people can't recover. People can't get out uh, of their crisis. They can't get out of their addiction. They can't get out of their medical conditions that they have issues with. Uh, They need that social work. They need those wraparound services that a service provider like the Region Appeal, City of Mississauga, can provide. I know the city staff is still working on, you know, a lot of the details of how this would work, but where do you see these types of modular housing units uh, to be set up in, in Peel? Well, and that's what one of the things we did uh, ask staff to come back with is where exactly can we can we put these in the municipalities? We asked for a number of locations across the three different uh, cities uh, where we could potentially put them, but we want to put them where they're needed the most, right? We know where the encampments are right now. We know where people are gravitating towards and, and centralizing uh, in terms of the homeless population. That's where we need to be, and that's where we need to help people the most. How much of a difference could this make? You mentioned, obviously, you, you, the, the, the municipality does doesn't have a, a, a turn away policy. People who are who do come to shelters when they're full are, are put up in hotels until those, I suppose, yeah, are at capacity. Yeah. But how much of a difference could this make when it comes to addressing some of these capacity issues? So we're talking about trying to address the bottleneck and the backlog, right? So we have about 91,000 households in the region who have core housing needs. Of that, we serve 34,000 um, through different variations where we either provide subsidies or rental units. But we have tens of thousands of people on the waiting list. This all contributes to more and more people needing emergency shelters. And we served over 4,100 people in our emergency shelters alone last year. Uh, Our capacity is only about 450 beds in those emergency shelters. In Mm -hmm. terms of hotels and motels, we can serve about 200, 250 rooms. So that's about 500 people. Um, But we've run out of space, right? We don't have uh, the money. We don't have the budget. And frankly, we also don't have the space. There aren't hotels, uh, you know, lining 
signing up to uh, provide homeless spaces um, to the municipality in order to provide those services. So the temporary modular housing, um, you know, it's it's quite affordable. There's a couple of companies out there who've helped set this up mm-hmm. uh, for municipalities in the past and recently and are, and are moving forward. They can do about 50 homes for a million dollars in about a month. So we've asked staff to look in this to provide that sort of missing middle uh, temporary housing to help people get them out of the shelter system to then free up more space and overflow and more space in those shelters. Where would the resources come for this? We know we heard an announcement from the Minister of Immigration yesterday, $97 million for Toronto for interim housing for asylum seekers. Uh, broader, uh, you know, there is a larger chunk of money that's going to other municipalities. C- could that be something that could potentially go towards a project like this? Yeah, we absolutely need that. Uh, I know the City of Toronto has gotten that $97 million out of the 212. Um, the region hasn't heard anything yet as of this morning, um, but we desperately need some of that as well. We're getting, because we don't turn people away, we're getting people from Toronto, we're getting people out of the airport, and we're getting our own residents who desperately need this as well. So, you know, Ontario's the only uh, provincial government that doesn't provide and run its own sort of housing uh, as a province. Uh, and so this downloading onto municipalities has been a big issue for, for decades, really. I mean, we're talking about two-thirds of all the housing expenses being covered by municipal taxpayers uh, and 100% of all the capital being paid for by the municipality as well. Uh, we need the provincial government and the federal government to step up and really, really help address this crisis right now. One of the issues around uh, these types of housing, modular housing units, here in Toronto has been pushed back from neighborhood residents. Uh, do you anticipate this would be an issue in Peel it, once you decide where these 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 types of housing units would be located? Yeah, absolutely. I think they're, in principle, people want to help. And in principle, people want to do the right thing. Uh, I think when it comes to locations, when it comes to the number of units, when it comes to where, uh, which backyards we're putting this in, mm-hmm. uh, that's going to be the next sort of conversation that we have to have. Um, but I think this crisis is not going to go away and it's going to get worse. You know, I, I, I've seen the encampment myself. Uh, I've seen people sleeping on park benches and I've seen people uh, in the parks. And this is um, something that I feel that, you know, Mississauga and Brampton residents have been uh, blissfully ignoring for a long time. Um, if we don't address it, uh, they're going to be seeing it a lot more often. And so this modular housing makes a huge difference in terms of opening up spaces to keep people off the streets, to get them off and get them the help that they need. The wraparound services that come with it, the the counseling, the, the mediation, uh, the support to find new housing, to find jobs, to find education, um, to support families and women who are fleeing violence, that's incredible. That's incredible work that the region does. But if we don't have anywhere to put them, we can't help them. Alvin, we appreciate you joining us in studio this morning for this important conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Alvin Tedjo is a counselor for Ward 2 in Mississauga. He also sits on the Peel Regional Board of Trade.